New Faces in the City by Thomas Ligotti Read by Jeff Clark One must speak of the imposter city. There is never a design to arrive in this place. One's destination is always elsewhere. Only as the journey's end approaches, perhaps too soon or by means of a strange route, may suspicions arise. Then everything requires a doubting gaze. Yet everything also seems above sensible question. On the occasion that one is set out for a great metropolis, here the very sight of anticipation is found. Its monuments spread wondrously across bright skies, and many colored gardens spread out in the warmth of the day. But here, one soon observes, nightfall is out of pace. It may be premature, an early darkness unfamiliar in its quality and duration. Throughout these smothering hours there may also be sounds that press strangely upon the fringes of sleep. The following day one may awake to a different season than the night before had promised, and all the towers of the great metropolis seem hidden behind a mist that draws a pale curtain across the sky. Yet, in fact, the towers are no longer there. Through the mist, which hovers thick and stagnant, the city projects the features of its true face. Drab, crumpled buildings appear along streets which twist without pattern like cracks between the pieces of a puzzle. Dark houses bulge. Neither stone nor wood, their surface might be of decaying flesh peeling away at the slightest touch. Some of these structures are mere facades propped up by a few rotting boards. Others falsify their interiors with crude scenes painted where windows should be, and where a true window appears there is likely to be an arm hanging out of it, a stuffed and dangling appendage with a hand whose fingers are too many or too few. Here and there, scraps of debris hop about with no wind to guide them. These are the only things that seem to move in these streets, though there is a constant scraping noise that follows one's steps. If one pauses for a moment to look into a narrow space between buildings, something may be seen dragging itself along the ground, or perhaps it has already laid itself across the street, obstructing the way that leads out of the city. This figure is only that of a dead-eyed dummy, and when someone tries to step over the thing, its mouth suddenly drops open. At the time, this is the best the city can do, a sham of menace that has no life and deceives no one. Only later, when in disgust one is left behind this place of feeble impostures, will the true menace make itself known and it begins when well-known surroundings inspire, on occasion, moments of doubt. Then places must verify themselves, objects are asked to prove their solidity, a searching hand makes inquiries upon the surface of a window. Afterward there are intense seizures of suspicion that will not abate. Everything seems to be on the verge of disclosing its unreality and drifting off into shadows and shadows appear to slide down rooftops, trickle down walls and into the streets like black rain. Your own eyes stare absently in the mirror, your mouth drops open, but it will not close. Thus, one must speak of the imposter city, and of the perils of bearing it back from a journey and being absorbed as one of its citizens.